कैन यू सी द व्हाइट बोर्ड हेलो सर ओके सो लेट्स स्टार्ट सो यस्टरडे आई मीन नॉट यस्टरडे द लास्ट क्लास वी डिराइव द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड एंड मैग्नेटिक फील्ड सो टुडे वी शैल डिस्कस अबाउट द इनवेरिएंट क्वांटिटीज इन द इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक फील्ड सो व्हाट आर द इनवेरिएंट क्वांटिटीज ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक फील्ड so we have uh, derived a very specific uh, uh, case i mean we have discussed about a very specific case where the, the charge i mean the charge particle uh, was considered in an electromagnetic field in the laboratory frame and then we considered another uh, inertial frame which is moving along the x axis with velocity uh, some velocity v and then we wrote down the transformation equation so let us again write down the same equation which we have derived in the last class so we have uh, obtain the transformation of electric field and magnetic field which uh, where the x component of uh, electric field in the prime frame was same because the motion was along the x axis and uh, the y component of electric field was transformed like this gamma v v is the velocity of the prime frame ey minus v b z and uh, ej prime was equal to gamma v time ej plus v by now there is a nice symmetry you can remember this easily if i ask you suppose the frame is moving along y axis what should be the transformation you can uh, figure it out from this expression itself you don't have to calculate it again because in that case ey prime will be equal to ey and then ej prime will be gamma v times ej uh, minus v this is cyclic xyz so you just consider xyz in a cyclic manner and write down the equation that is straight forward okay so and what are the equation in terms of the parallel and perpendicular component we wrote down them as well in this form, form. so parallel components should be same and the perpendicular components get transformed so you can combine these two equation in a single equation if perpendicular prime will be equal to gamma v times uh, the e perpendicular which could be either of ey or ej plus uh, this is nothing but v cross b uh, per perpendicular component of v, v cross b similarly we also obtained the x transformation for magnetic field if you remember again the parallel component of magnetic field doesn't change this remains same and uh, gamma v times b y uh, plus yes in place of b there will be b by c square okay times uh, ej electric field right they get mixed up electric field and magnetic field they get mixed up and we have a bj prime is equal to gamma v bj minus b uh, y c square you can again see i mean there is a very similar uh, uh i mean cyclic relation i mean you can see the plus minus and then again plus minus x y z comes after y you have z after z so this i mean sorry i have uh, yeah this is correct yeah b z have i written it correctly or no e y is it correct is this e y x y z yeah it's y fine and you can combine them into parallel and perpendicular form component of uh, which is parallel and perpendicular and we have already obtained these relations i am just writing them to remind you of those equation because these are important gamma v then we have uh, b perpendicular minus 1 by c square we have v cross e right this time it will be v cross e and of course the perpendicular component uh but uh, one can also ask uh, what will be the most general uh, expression for the transformation of electro electric and magnetic field i mean if i say that the suppose the prime frame is moving uh, uh, along say a direction which is 60 degree uh, which makes an angle 60 degree with the x axis so it could be an arbitrary direction here i have talked about the transformation when the moving prime frame is moving along the x axis just following the transformation equation you can also write down the transformation equation for uh, motion along y axis or z axis but what about the most general expression i mean for any arbitrary uh, direction for that you have to apply the 
that most general Lorentz transformation, which I have derived in some previous class. Uh, so the transformation equation, I mean, if you look at the transformation matrix, that is a bit, bit long, lengthy. I mean, all the elements are non-zero, so you have a lots of terms there. You have to simplify it. And if you do that, you'll, you can figure it out that electric field in the prime frame can be written as, and for the most general transformation, I mean, so this will be E, which is electric field in the unprime frame, plus beta V, I mean, V by C beta b cross b minus gamma v square divided by gamma v plus 1 times uh, beta v beta v dot e beta v dot e ah, okay and similarly the magnetic field in the most general case will be gamma v times again if you remember one you can write down the other b plus might there be minus beta v cross e minus gamma v square gamma v plus one beta v beta v so there is no new physics involved here. You just have to do a, I mean, slightly lengthy calculation. You just have, because in that case, matrix is not uh, so simple. I mean, it's, you just don't have uh, these four non-zero terms. There are non, lots of non-zero terms. So you have to simplify that. And if you do that, you will find out that the electric field and magnetic field in the prime frame can be written in terms of the electric field and magnetic field in the unprime frame by using this expression. Okay, so you'll be using uh, uh, each of them. I mean, you can uh, depending on suppose the, in the if it's written that the prime frame is moving along the y-axis. So, I mean, it is easier to use this transformation because in that case you know each of the terms very in a simple manner. I mean, you can also use this one. I mean, they are identical, but only thing is that uh, you have to just write down them in a compact manner by uh, I mean using the general Lorentz transformation matrix. Okay. So today I am going to discuss about the invariant quantities in the electromagnetic field. What are the invariant quantities? Probably you know it from some other course because this may not be the first course in electrodynamics. In BSc you may have studied electrodynamics. So there are two important uh, invariants in electromagnetic field. If you can, uh, if you calculate, uh, you can figure it out from the expression itself. Uh, so let us write down them. So one of the invariant is basically the dot product between the electric field and magnetic field. So if you calculate the dot product between the electric field and magnetic field, uh, the invariance in the electric. So the invariance of the electromagnetic field. So the first invariant is in the dot product between the electric field and magnetic field. So if we calculate say E prime dot B prime, we can show that this must be equal to E dot B. That is that these two quantity, if you take dot product in the prime and unprime frame, they must have to be equal. Let us check that because we have already had obtained a set of expression for e, e prime and b prime. So this will be basically e x prime, uh, b x prime, like just the x y z component plus e y prime, b y prime plus e z prime, b z prime. Just put the values because e x prime equal to e x, b x prime equal to b x. So I can write e x b x x prime bx prime equal to ex bx and then ju just put the values for the uh, other quantities so ey prime is gamma b ey minus b b z wrote down this expressions few minutes back and by prime is a gamma v this will be plus right? both are y one is minus for electric field is minus magnetic field is plus b gamma v by plus v by c square times ej right 
uh, yeah z and the last quantity is what plus ez prime is gamma v this will be plus minus plus gamma v ez plus uh, v b y v b y and then bz prime is gamma v this time it will be minus bz minus uh, v y c square e y if you multiply and simplify the different terms what we shall get let us see ex bx very straightforward ex bx plus gamma v square is there okay let us take that common gamma v square and then inside let us multiply that first term will be ui by then plus uh, v y c square e y e z e y e z then uh, minus of v b y b z then uh, minus of uh, v square y c square v by c square and v b square by c square e z b z e z b z and then the last uh, one again gamma v square and they can then multiply them e z b z minus uh, v y c square e y e z then we have uh, plus sign v v uh, y b z and then minus v square by c square minus v square by c square e y b y e y b y let us see which terms remain so this will be yeah v by c square e y e z gamma v square here we have minus v by c square gamma v square e y e z so this term and this term will get cancelled or contact out by v b y b z minus minus v b y b z gamma v square can actually plus v b y b z gamma v square so this term this term will get cancelled then if we write e x b x plus gamma v square let us take e z b z common so that will give us e z b z into 1 minus v square by c square plus again let us take common e y b y common that will give us again 1 minus v square by c square and 1 minus v square by c square is nothing but 1 by gamma v square so this will and this will cancel out so what we are left with is e x b x plus e y b y plus e z b z so that is nothing but the dot product of the electric field and magnetic field in the on prime frame or the laboratory frame right so this and this must be equal so this dot product remains same now if you look at this i mean it can have several important implications uh, because uh, in case of say electromagnetic wave right in case of electromagnetic wave e and b are always orthogonal to each other right so dot product that means e dot b will be always zero right cross 90 degree will be zero on any electromagnetic wave this will be always zero in any any inner cell frame and uh, for any other electromagnetic field where uh, e and b may not be necessarily orthogonal to each other yeah, say 30 degree 60 degree you can make any angle say 130 degree in that case you should remember here you should note here don't, you don't need to remember it just you can see the expression so if uh, e dot b is a positive quantity then it has it has to be positive quantity in all the inertial frames right so when it will be positive say say the angle between e and b is an acute angle right so in that case e dot b will be e mod of e times mod of b so okay let's go to the next page so e e dot b e dot b will be mod of e mod of b times uh, dot b uh, times uh, some some angle you can take it as a cos phi or cos theta or whatever you like to denote it as say cos phi cos phi 
let us find the cos phi. So phi is the angle between E and B. So in that case, uh, you see, this will be always greater than zero when the angle is acute, acute for the acute angle, uh, acute angle. And it will be less than zero for obtuse angle. So it suggests that if the angle between E and B is acute in one frame, it must have to be acute in any other frame because in one frame it cannot be acute in other frame can be obtuse. Then, then the sign will change because E dot B will be positive in one frame and negative in other frame, which is not allowed by relativity, right? So this is a consequence of relativity, which we are discussing right now. So uh, this is one important invariant, uh, which you want to remember. Uh, another in invariant uh, is uh, the quantity, which uh, is uh, the square of E square. So E prime square, E prime square, minus a c square b prime square again if you look at, at this expression carefully you see for an electromagnetic field so whichever frame you go say in that frame so what will be uh, what will be e prime right in any frame if i write e prime e prime will be c times b prime right so because the b prime is e, e prime by c or b equal to e by c that means for any electromagnetic wave this will be always zero in whichever frame you go, right? But for any other uh, electromagnetic field, this may not be necessarily zero. It could be positive, it could be negative, any other value can be possible. So this quantity remains invariant uh, for an electromagnetic field. So let us uh, check that. Again, we know the expression for ex, ey, ez, and bx, by, bz in terms of the prime quantities. So let us write down those. So ex, uh, this is ex prime square ex prime square plus ey prime square plus ej prime square minus c square bx prime square minus c square by prime square minus c square bj prime or I, I could have taken c square outside of that but anyway uh, this one and if we substitute the values of these uh, prime quantity so ex prime each ex so i can write down ex square ey prime we know this is gamma v square times ey minus vbz square what is ez square uh, sorry ez prime square that is gamma v square ez plus v b y square so just do a plus b square a plus minus a minus b square kind of thing and simplify things and minus uh, c square bx prime is bx so c square bx square minus c square by prime square is gamma v square by prime is gamma v times by plus v by c square times ej whole square right and it's minus of c square bj prime square which is c square gamma v square and then this will be negative bj negative sign v by c square times ui v by c square times ui whole square so you have to simplify just this a square plus b square plus i mean these, these are straight ways is straightforward so let us uh, do that it will take just one minute ex square plus um, uh, okay okay let me write down this quantity x component first so this will be uh, x uh, okay maybe maybe i can write down ex square minus say c square bx square separately and then plus i can take gamma p square common because gamma p square is all with all the terms gamma p square and then a bracket and then i'm writing all the terms e u y square plus b square bz square minus twice v u i uh, bz right ui yes ui bz bz plus ej square plus b square by square plus twice b ej by ej by minus c square by square minus p square by c square into ej square 
minus twice v e z times b y minus c square b z square right x y and z b z square minus again it's very similar v square by c square e y square plus twice v e y b z you can see the terms which will be cancelled out so uh, this one 2 b e y b z right 2 b e y b z e y b z uh, 2 b e y b z and what is e y b z e y b z am i done it correctly twice third term is e y b z last one right this one e y b z yeah this one and this one and then which one e z b y this one is e z b y plus and this one right and now if you write down it uh, simplify it further so let us do that now if we take simplify it so e prime square minus c square b prime square is equal to e x square minus c square bx square this is square right yeah plus gamma v square and then we shall take this e y square e z square common so if i take e y square common i will have again one minus v square by c square similar to the previous formula and if i then take e z square common you can check it later one minus v square by c square which i have left in the previous page and then you can take again c square b y square common you will have another 1 minus b square by c square factor and then c last one is c square b z square you will have again 1 minus b square by c square so you can see this 1 minus b square by c square is nothing but 1 by gamma b square so those will be cancelled out so finally what we will be left with is e x square plus e y square gamma square gets cancelled plus e z square all are positive and these will be minus of c square b x square minus c square b y square minus c square b z square that means this is nothing but e square minus c square b square so this is another invariant quantity which one should remember and uh, one important thing which you should not forget that whenever you are uh, dealing with such invariants you should think about both these invariant together not any one of them because both this must hold I mean, both this uh, invariant should be i mean e dot b and e square minus c square b square both this quantity e dot b and uh, e square minus c square b square they should be considered together not uh, one and forget about the other you have to think them together okay so this uh, tells us a few important things which we should uh, discuss uh, now is that uh, uh, i mean say when e and b are not perpendicular when e and b are not perpendicular can you transform an electromagnetic field to a electric field i mean what i am trying to say is that suppose in one frame you have say e and b right e and b and you want to transform this uh, electromagnetic field to another frame say s and s prime so suppose this is an s and s prime where you want to see only electric field okay so suppose there is only e prime and b prime is zero that means electromagnetic field is transformed into an electric field or you can also think that okay i have e and b i would like to transform this to another frame s prime where we will have uh, say uh, i mean this is not equal to zero so in, in this case suppose e prime equal to zero and b prime is uh, not equal to zero that means you want to transform an electromagnetic field to a pure electric field or a uh, sorry pure a magnetic field or a pure electric field so is that possible so the answer lies in this uh, two expression right if you look at this two expression carefully you see if i if i have a situation when e and b are uh, not perpendicular say they make an angle 60 degree that means e dot b will be a positive quantity now in this frame if i go to this frame i am demanding that the magnetic field is zero that means e dot e, e prime dot b prime in this frame e dot e prime dot b prime will be zero whereas in this frame 
e dot b will be non zero is that possible that is not possible right this is not possible that means whenever you want to transform an electromagnetic field to a pure electric field or a pure magnetic field you must have to have a situation where electric field and magnetic field stands perpendicular to each other because in that case you see do not encounter such an ambiguity because in that case if they are orthogonal to each other no problem even if uh, e, here i have both e and b non zero but since they stand perpendicular to each other in this frame we will have e dot b equal to zero because of the, this angle between them on the other hand in this frame i have a zero uh, magnetic field but a non zero electric field so the dot product even though the angle may not be same because there is no magnetic field there is no question of any angle but the thing is that since the two two quantities one of them is zero one of other is non zero the dot product must be zero so that condition is satisfied so if you want to transform an electromagnetic field to a pure electric field or a pure magnetic field the most important criteria that must hold is that is not the sufficient condition that's an one important condition that e and b must stand perpendicular to each other then only you will be able to transform an electromagnetic field to a pure electric field or a pure magnetic field okay so uh, what are what are the other condition that is required that let us discuss that uh, and then then you have to look at this 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 equation right the other invariant e square minus c square b square so what is the other invariant that is e square minus c square b square and if you look at this uh say square so what we are claiming is that uh, in an electromagnetic for any electromagnetic field for any electromagnetic field we must have if i consider two different frame we must have e prime square minus uh c square b prime square equal to e square minus c square b square now as we have discussed about the first uh, invariant uh, let us uh, think about the second invariant in this case so what we are saying that in one frame we have say in one frame we have say uh, uh, i mean what i told you that e prime is say zero okay and say b prime is not equal to zero right not equal to zero uh so what is the what is the condition then so in this case if the, that is the case then you see the left hand side what will be this this will be simply e prime square e prime square right that that's a positive quantity on the other hand you see in this side i have both both e and b are non zero because that's an electromagnetic field e non zero b non zero right of of course these are magnitude magnitude i am talking about okay magnitude okay mod of that zero that means this can be positive only in certain cases not in each and every condition because in that case mod of e must have to be greater than c times mod of b that will make this quantity positive right right uh, on the left hand side we have since there is no magnetic field so this quantity is positive e prime square is positive then only this condition can hold so what are the what is the condition for transforming sir, uh, sir. yes put a b prime so much zero legacy ha left hand side b prime so much zero legacy ha thik ache kon ta ei ta ha ha b prime okay okay yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yes right ei ta ei ta right yeah thank you this this is zero right i just move it uh, fine is right so anyway i mean i will discuss both the cases in this case yeah i, I am talking about non zero electric field i mean transforming an electro electric and magnetic field e and b uh, to uh, e prime okay and uh, b b there is no b b prime right so in, for that what are the necessary condition necessary condition is that e dot b has to be uh, zero that means e and b has to be perpendicular and and mod of a has to be greater than c mod of b then only you can transform an electromagnetic field to a pure electric field right uh, similarly 
I mean, the other thing is quite trivial. If you look at this equation, if I say that, okay, uh, E prime is zero, that means the other one, it is transformed into pure magnetic field. So B prime uh, not equal to zero, right? On the other, the other side, we have both electric field not equal to zero, magnetic field not equal to zero, right? In this side. In this side, prime side, we have only magnetic field, no electric field. That means if I put down the values of E prime and B prime in the invariant left, left hand side, I get minus of C square B prime square, C square B prime square, right? This is a negative quantity because negative of some squared that's a negative quantity. So it immediately implies that the quantity on the right hand side has to be negative. And that is only possible if we have mod of E is less than C times mod of B, right? That will make it negative, the quantity is square minus C square B square. So to transform electromagnetic field, electromagnetic field uh, to um, pure magnetic field, right? Electric field, magnetic field going to pure magnetic field, right? You, the condition is the, again this must hold. E dot B has because as I told you, both the conditions should be considered together, not one individually. E dot B equal to zero. That means E and B must stand perpendicular to each other, and we should have mod of E less than C mod of B. Then we can transform a electromagnetic field to a pure magnetic field. What about uh, transforming an electric field uh, to a pure magnetic field? Suppose I have only electric field in one frame. Can I can can this electric field appear like a magnetic field from another frame? Right. This condition which I have discussed right now, this is this this we must have encountered before because when charge particle is at rest in some frame, we have only electric field, right? But another frame which is moving with respect to that, in that frame the charge particle is moving, so we must have both electric field and magnetic field. But what about transforming an electric field to a magnetic field or the vice versa? Say, suppose I want to transform a magnetic field, one frame it is magnetic field, another frame it is electric field. Because they are interrelated and they get mixed up, uh, can, he, can, I, can I say that this can happen or not? Can I transform that electric field to magnetic field or the vice versa? Uh, let us see. Again, we have to use the same invariants that we have uh, discussed right now. So what are the invariants? E dot B is invariant quantity, e square minus C e square B square is also invariant quantity. Now, if I demand that, uh, if I demand that, uh, say, in one frame, so what are the, uh, yes. So suppose uh, what I'm saying that uh, in one frame, we have, say, only uh, E prime and uh, B prime is uh, zero. And when I uh, go to the another frame, so S and S prime, so this is S prime and this is S. Here I am saying that I have uh, no electric field, um, only magnetic field, right? Magnetic field is, uh, sorry, I have a, yeah, admit. E prime is there, E prime, so I should write non zero, otherwise it will be confusing. Okay. Uh, this is non zero, right? Okay, I mean, this is. We have a non-zero electric field and zero magnetic field. And here I want to uh, get a situation where electric field is zero and magnetic field is non-zero. That means in S frame we had only a magnetic field that get transformed to an electric field, right? Is it possible? So if I look at the second condition, that means we have written A prime square minus C square and B prime square, right? this must be equal to e square minus c square b square right since we have no b prime so this is simply e prime square right this has to be equal to e is zero so we have to write minus of c square b square is this possible this side is positive this side is negative so you are trying to say some positive number equal to some negative number this is not possible. This is only possible for a vanishing electric field or magnetic field. When the electric field, magnetic field vanishes, then there is no such ambiguity. But for any other non-zero electric field and magnetic field, it can, this cannot be satisfied. Similarly, I mean, again, this is very uh, similar. I mean, you have only say electric field E prime equal to zero and B prime not equal to zero. And in this side, you have say E, 
uh, non zero and uh, b zero then again you encounter the same problem because in that case the e is zero so we will have cis minus of c square b prime square equal to in this side we have e non zero so e square b is zero again you encounter the same ambiguity where a negative number has to be equal to some positive number again that, that is not possible so our conclusion is that we cannot transform a pure electromagnetic pure electric field to a magnetic field or a pure magnetic field to a pure electric field that is not allowed by relativity a electromagnetic field can be transformed to a pure electric field or a pure magnetic field given we satisfy the condition e dot b equal to zero or mod of e greater than c b mod or e mod of e less than c b mod that is possible but this is not allowed fine so these are the invariants again see we have not still discussed about the nature of electromagnetic field yet because we are gradually entering to the subject where you have just uh, obtained the transformation of electromagnetic field so let us now uh, discuss uh, what are the what are the underlying physical meaning of a magnetic field so i will just discuss uh, some uh, uh, example let us discuss some example which will give you some insight about the magnetic field okay let me go to the next page so here i will discuss about a particular uh, example which uh, is quite insightful so in this example so uh, i will just uh, show you that uh, you see even without discussing about any electric field and a magnetic field one can simply show from relativity that there should be a force which uh, is uh, nothing but the magnetic field which you have encountered in uh, electrostatics or magnet i mean sorry electrodynamics so even without uh, discussing anything about electrodynamics one can show the existence of magnetic field from relativity and that is interesting because see uh, historically speaking uh, uh, Maxwell's equation came first, and then uh, this uh, special theory of relativity was discovered by Einstein in 1905, right? And uh, the Maxwell's equation were given in 1865. So there is quite a large time time gap. But this could have been uh, opposite also. I mean, relativity could have come first, and then relativity from relativity one could have derived all the Maxwell's equation. That is possible. Okay. So let me just uh, discuss this simple example, uh, which will uh, elaborate. Uh, the meaning what I am trying to convey here. So let us uh, imagine a laboratory frame. Okay, say S. So again, it's a very simple example. So I am drawing the picture. This is a laboratory frame. Say let us label the axis X. Say this is Y and this is Z. And this is the frame S. In this frame, let us take uh, two charge, equal charge Q. Okay. So along the y axis they are separated by a distance say r okay suppose i take two charge q q they are separated by a distance r between them right so this is r okay, r and both these charge particle are say moving along the x axis with same velocity u Okay, fine. So now let us consider another inertial frame. Okay, so which we label as S prime. Okay, and this frame S prime is moving along the x axis with a velocity which is exactly same as the velocity of this charge particle, say. Say I'm saying this is S prime and say V prime, oh no, V prime, no, not V. Uh, so V is uh, basically exactly equal to U, okay. Magnitude and direction both. And in this frame, so there is an observer in this frame and there is an observer in the lab frame, okay. Now both the observer are say asked to calculate the force between the two charge particle, 
these two passes charge. Let us call this particle A and this particle B. So force between A and B. What is the force between A and B? Now, clearly in this frame, in the S prime frame, since the frame is moving with velocity which is exactly equal to the velocity of the charge particle, this frame is nothing but the rest frame of the charge particles. And both the particles are moving along the x-axis with the same velocity, so they are parallel to each other. And you see, the distance between them will not change because in relativity, any orthogonal, I mean, separation should not change. So length contraction will only take place along the x-axis, not along the y-axis. That's orthogonal, right? The distance between the two charge particles will remain same, whichever frame you go. I mean, no, I mean, uh, whatever velocity you take, right? So they will this 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 distance will not get affected by the relative motion between the frame prime and unprime frame in this particular example. Say. So uh, uh, in the rest frame of the charged particles, that is in the prime s prime frame, there will be no force due to. Uh, I mean, okay. So let us not talk about magnetic field because I have not. Uh, introduced any magnetic field in this example. So let us, uh, okay, um, how to explain. Okay, so let us let us consider this S prime frame. In this frame, both the charges are at rest, right? They are not moving. Charge A as well as charge B, both are at rest. And the only force which is acting between them is the Coulombian force of repulsion. So if I ask you what is the force acting between the two charge particles, you will say, okay, there is an so let us write down the quantities in the two frames separately, say an S frame and S prime frame in S, we'll write down and in S prime, okay. So in S prime, we have only force due to the Coulombian repulsion, which is straightforward to write. So F E electric field, this is electric field F E prime equal to, what is that? Q square because both the charges are same Q times Q1 into Q2 Q square by 4 pi epsilon 0 I am using an SI unit into R square right and this force is acting along which direction X Y or Z which axis y axis. y axis right so yeah so this is this is let us call F Y prime right there are uh, other there could be other uh, forces here but you see there are no such forces because fx prime is zero right why i am using this simple example because you have already derived the transformation of four force so you already know the transformation formula so it will be easier to understand so fx prime there are no force along the x axis there are no force along the z axis there is only one force of repulsion acting along the y axis so this, this charge is repelling the other charge along this direction. This charge is repelling the other charge along this direction. One along the plus y and the minus y. Okay. So this is a force of repulsion. And this is in S prime frame. Now, let us look at the same, uh, same example or the same uh, event from the laboratory frame. Right. We have already derived the transformation of a four force. If you uh, forgotten that, let me write down it for you again. What is the transformation of four force? Mm, okay. I also don't remember. Let me see. Fx. Uh, what was that? Okay. I think. What was the transformation of force? Let me see if I have anything, any paper where it is written. I don't remember. Ah, I have a paper where it is written. So let me write down that. Okay, because I don't want to read really it once again. Okay, so so that first time writing the because we already know what is fx prime fy prime fz prime so it will be easiest to obtain fx fy and fz from the transformation so what was fx if you remember fx the x, no, transformation for fx was fx prime this was derived last class plus v by c square times e prime dot f prime divided by 1 plus ux prime v by c square and fy prime this fy equal to fy prime 
divided by gamma v 1 plus u x prime v by c square right and similarly f z equal to f z prime divided by gamma v 1 plus u x prime v by c square what is what is u x prime f y prime f z prime we already have written f x f x prime which is nothing but f e prime sorry f y prime f x prime is 0 f z prime is 0 and what is u prime u prime is the velocity of the particle in the prime frame right since prime frame is the rest frame of the charge particles so there should not be any velocity of the charge particle in that frame so prime quantities are 0 u prime equal to 0 u x prime equal to 0 so this term will be 0 so what will be f x so we can write down here f x equal to f x equal to uh, again f x equal to f x prime right again since f x prime equal to 0 I can straight away write 0 there is no force along this direction what about the force along the y direction in this laboratory frame see in this case second term is 0 but gamma v times 1 is there right so this will be f y prime divided by gamma v and what is f y prime if you look at this expression you can see this is equal to f y prime is q square divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 r square right so f y prime uh, this is uh, divided by gamma right so what is gamma 1 by square root of 1 minus v square by c square so that will be if I, I multiply it here 1 minus v square by c square square root of that or to the power half right this is this is uh, gamma v 1 by gamma v which I have written here uh, again you can simplify it since velocity is very small as compared to the speed of light you can write down this to be equal to q square by 4 pi epsilon 0 r square if you expand it in Taylor series you can write 1 minus half of say v square by c square plus dot 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 and v by c is very small so v square by c square will be even some smaller so you can simply write down this and what is fz fz is equal to so fz fz is equal to fz prime divided by gamma v and since fz prime is 0 here so we have fz equal to 0 so there in this frame also there are no forces acting along x or z direction there is only force which is acting along y direction so what is nu okay if you look at this expressions of force acting along the y direction in both the prime and unprime frame you will notice a difference you see in the prime frame we have a Coulombian repulsive force you see q square by 4 pi epsilon 0 r square whereas in the laboratory frame that is on prime frame we have q square by 4 pi epsilon 0 r square minus q square by 4 pi epsilon 0 r square times v square by 2 c square so what does it say it says that beside this Coulombian repulsion there will be also an attractive force you see this minus something is nothing but the magnetic force that we can figure out that this there is an attractive force as well as a repulsive force why there should be an attractive force if you if you attack the problem from your known experience of magnetic field you see when there is charge positive charge moving along the x-axis there will be current along this x-axis right the current so any current gives rise to magnetic field right so what will be the magnetic field uh, direction of the magnetic field at the location of uh, say charge b if i ask you what is the direction of magnetic field here it will be pointing downwards here right because you know uh, from the see, this I mean from this uh, right hand uh, right I mean this uh, if I have a magnetic field like current like this so magnetic field right what right right hand so magnetic field here will point towards the page here it will be coming out of the page right here right so for this uh, current the magnetic field will be pointing downwards here right and for this current right you can again find out the the direction of magnetic field and you know the force acting on a current on a magnetic field i cross b right so if you calculate i cross b 
probably you have done it in your BSC. The two current carrying wire, if they carry current in the same direction, they attract. Otherwise, they repel, right? That is uh, already, I think, you have done it uh, in, in your BSC. Two parallel current carrying wire, they always attract each other, right? And because of this force due to magnetic field. But I have not talked about any magnetic field in the whole discussion. You see, I have not talked about any magnetic field, right? This is the transformation of four force. I have just assumed that the this Coulomb's law is correct. The only, only law that I have used in this discussion is Coulomb's law. So assume that the Coulomb's law is correct. And if I'm transforming this Coulomb's law in the two frames, the two inertial frame. One frame is saying that there will be repulsive force. Another frame, we see that there will be repulsive as well as an attractive force. Now, can you transform uh, to another, another frame or any frame where this attractive uh, since repulsive force becomes an attractive force? That will be quite interesting. If a repulsive force becomes an attractive force another, in another frame, then that will be interesting. But you see, that is not possible. Why? Look at this expression, which we have derived right now. You see, in that case, you see, see when just look at this expression. If V is equal to 0, if V equal to 0, that, that is the static scenario, where V, when v equal to 0, there is no force due to the, I mean, I am not talking this in terms of magnetic field. There is some attractive force, and that attractive force vanishes as long as soon as you have V equal to 0. That is just pure this Coulombian repulsion, repulsive force. But as soon as you have some motion, you see some this negative term pops up in this equation. And that negative terms here is nothing but the magnetic field. OK, we will see how that is magnetic field. But for the time being, you just remember that you see. And one, another important thing that you should notice here that v, this is V by C square, right? So it's a second order effect, right? So magnetic field will be much, much weaker as compared to the electric field. Because this, this is q square by 4 pi epsilon naught r square. That is q square by 4 pi epsilon naught r square times v square by c square. Right? So v by c is a number which is smaller than 1. So v square by c square must be much, much smaller than 1. Right? So this is second order magnetic field. You see, I have not talked about any magnetic field. So it's a simple transformation of four force. It's saying us that if you have a force due to a Coulombian repulsion, in another frame, we have an at repulsive force as well as an attractive force. And that attractive force is nothing but the force due to magnetic field. Now, why it has a particular, um, I mean, uh, form and a direction that I will discuss in the next class, not uh, today, because I do not have much time left. How much time we are left with? Only two minutes. Okay, so I am, I am not going to discuss that today. So, the interesting thing that that, that magnetic field are the concept magnetic field. The, the the magnetic field arises due to relativity. If there is no relativity, there will be no magnetic field. You can see. Because there is, if, the, if this term is not there, this term purely arises due to this transformation of four force, right? So magnetic field purely arises due to relativity. Now you can ask me that uh, if magnetic field is a relativistic force, then how can we measure that magnetic field in the laboratory? Because we are not moving at the speed of light, right? How can we measure magnetic field in the laboratory? Okay, we measure magnetic field like say one test, there's a unit for magnetic field. So interesting thing is that even the magnetic field is much, much weaker than the electric field, we can measure it. How? Because if you completely screen or say uh, screen out the electric field, so what happens in front of a current carrying wire? You see, when we measure magnetic field in front of a current carrying wire, see, I have a current carrying wire here, right? And I am measuring current is flowing in this direction. I am measuring magnetic field here. So I, I get some non zero value. How? Because this current carrying wire is electrically neutral. So it contains as many as positive charges. As, as many electrons are there. So as a whole, this, this current carrying wire is electrically neutral. So it has no electric field at this point, location say P. I take two location P where I measure the magnetic field. So since the wire is electrically neutral, there is no electric field here. But where, how do I get a magnetic field? Because you see this measurable magnetic field that we get due to relativity is possible only because there are lots of lots of electron in a conductor. If you look at the uh, number density of electrons, I think I don't remember the exact numbers. It could be something like 10 power 19 or 20 per meter cube or something like that. So it's a huge, huge number, very, very large number. And what is the typical velocity of electrons in a conductor? So electrons move uh, the drift velocity of electrons are around a few millimeters per second. That is definitely not relativistic velocity. So the reason is that even, even the velocity of the electrons are very small, only a few millimeters per second, but still you get a measurable value of the magnetic field 
at the location p just because there are lots of lots of electrons so if there are 10 to the power of, uh, 10 to the power 19 electrons per meter cube that's a very high density of electrons each of them are moving with some velocity say few millimeter per second which is giving rise to some contribution to this this second term which i have written here this negative this negative term here so when you combine the, the contribution from all those 10 to the power 19 electrons you get some measurable value of magnetic field in the laboratory that's why magnetic fields can be measured in laboratory but you should remember that not it is not true that all the relativistic uh, effect all the effects of relativity only occurs when v is closer to c you can see that the magnetic field is a consequence of relativity and which can be measured in the laboratory even though electrons are moving with only a few speed of few millimeter per second so uh, here i just have given you uh, some idea uh, i mean from the transformation of fourth force that uh, it, it, some quantity like magnetic field can be predicted purely from relativity you don't need any other thing to uh, predict uh, magnetic field uh, uh, so we do not have much time i think I, i'm over maybe you have some class so let me stop here we will continue our discussion tomorrow if you have any question you can ask okay it's fine so uh, there are no question i will stop by just mentioning one important thing that you see this this columbian repulsive force will remain repulsive in all frames right because of this term you can see v square by c square that will be much much smaller than one v by c always less than one right so there is no frame where you v exceeds c right so repulsive force remains repulsive in all frames it cannot be attractive in one frame and repulsive in another frame that's a consequence of relativity right relativity is just enforcing that and uh, that is telling us that uh, uh, attractive force will arise when there is a relative motion between two frames. So, when you measure magnetic field in laboratory, basically this arises due to the relative motion of the electrons in the current carrying wire. And there is not single, there are a bunch of electrons, many, many electrons, 10 to the power 19 electrons, so which is combinedly giving us some measurable non zero magnetic field in the laboratory. Okay, so I stop.